Welcome to the weekend. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate, and I'm, I'm not wearing any pants. And to talk about all the fun and festivities, the man who knows more about makeup than your mother does, <laughs> Eli Stokel from Fox 31. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. I don't know if I know that much about makeup, but maybe more than you two. Which, I'll admit oh, to oh, that. Oh, really? I'll admit to that. Yeah, yeah, we, can, yeah. we can have it out later. And the man who knows nothing about appearances <laughs> from the Denver Post, Tim Hoover. Glad to have you. Hey, John. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine. No comeback? No well, comeback. I don't want to say I know nothing about appearances, right. but, you know, I can't top. <laughs> I can't. can't top Eli. You here. can't top Eli. <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry. I, I, got a, I got a face for radio. And you can w listen to me late nights on 850 KOA. All right, let's jump into this. Every year, you know, we, the chattering classes, the political wonk types, we always say, we've never seen an election year like this. This is crazy. But I always feel like I'm the, you know, the sports announcer for the Super Bowl. Go, uh, we've never seen a game like this. And, and sure you have. But this year, it's pretty damn weird. Let's, let's, let's start over with the, with the Republican Im implosion. Uh, Rasmussen poll just came out, shows that Dan Mays is slipping, Tom Tancredo is uh, gaining, and Hickenlooper is just laughing his way all the way to the mansion. Right. Um, no, this really is a year like no other, not just for Colorado, but no other state that, no, that anyone can remember. Um, where else is there an example where you could see uh, a party walk away, um, forcefully abandon its own nominee? Uh, there's no comparison that anyone can think of. And you could uh, let, let me ask you about that. I mean, the the story this last week has really been the Republican establishment abandoning, pushing away Dan Mays, trying to get him to fall off off a cliff. You know, and, and poor Dick Wadhams, you got to feel sorry. The guy's job is to get the nominee elected. But there's rumors out there that even Dick Wadhams doesn't want him as nominee. The, was it, the L.A. Times wrote some story about that, and he's of course got to deny it. It's an ugly time to be a Republican, at least in this race. Right. I mean, um, it, it's not going to help the the Republicans on their ticket. I mean, you, you sort of wonder if there's going to be a, a balancing effect where the the money in the will instead of going to the governor's race will go to the the down ticket races. At the same time, though, there's such an enthusiasm gap um, for this guy. How's that going to work out? Is there going to be money well spent? Did you coin that one yourself? Enthusiasm gap. <laughs> right. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, and you could end up with a, a situation where um, because of Tancredo getting, um, you know, well above 20, maybe 30 percent, whatever, you could end up with a, a Democratic governor who won by a plurality. Yeah. Um, how do you govern with a plurality? Well, um, Bill Clinton did it a couple of times. That worked out just tr fine. True, but in Colorado, when was the last time that happened? I can't remember. And, you know, it's it's very peculiar. I mean, what you, how are you going to move forward, uh, say that you're going to put together uh, Son of Ref C or uh, Tax Increase 2012, whatever. How are you going to do that if you got 40-something percent of the vote? Is, um, it, is, it, is this a sure thing at this point? Can, can we all just say it's Hickenloopers and that's that? I think until some other huge skeleton falls out of the closet, we can all say that. And I think on some of Tim's points, I mean, you talk about poor Dick Wadhams. Dick Wadhams has had a miserable summer, and that's going to be his first talking point. He's already started using it, that if Hickenlooper doesn't get 50 percent, he's not a governor who is elected by a majority. So we will see that down the road. But, you know, Dick Wadhams didn't pick either of the candidates who are out there. He's the party chairman. He'll get all the blame if things go wrong. But let's be honest. Let's go back a year and remember that Dick Wadhams didn't want Scott McGinnis to be the candidate for governor. He wanted Josh Penry. He wanted Jay Norton to be the Senate nominee. The people with the money came in. They essentially went over Dick's head, picked the candidates, and we all know how that turned out because they're not in touch with a very active grassroots base this year, abnormally active. It is, it is amazing to me how the Republican money establishment is so out of touch with us. After seeing three electoral sessions where we've gotten our clocks clean by the left putting money into infrastructure. I mean, nobody ran against uh, uh, Ritter in the primary. Nobody ran against Hickelooper in the primary. But Republicans, we eat our young. It is an amazingly stupid thing, and it's that rich guy Guys, well, they owe a favor here, they owe a favor there, they, they like Scott McGinnis, and, and instead of going with a winner, I mean, if Josh Penry stayed in the race, he'd be governor. Well, the wealthy are, you know, less feeling the pain of the economy, and so I don't think they were hearing the 
uh, folks who were in the lower echelons of their own party who are really turned upside down and sideways um, from this recession. I mean, it's it's just really turned America upside down. and. I, I think that's what except, except for reporters. Reporters are doing We are well. flush with well, money. It's amazing uh, to see what's going on. I buy cartons of makeup myself. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you just, the, the thing is, is that the economy is just so pervasive. Uh, the, the issue of uh, the recession is so pervasive in all of the philosophy for Democrats and Republicans, it dominates everything. And I don't think that the upper echelon people may have necessarily felt that quite so keenly. Is, is the Republican Party over here in Colorado? And I, I, let me see if, or is the Constitutional Party actually going to get a leg up here? There's no doubt in my mind that Mays will come in third in a third three-man race. And Tom will likely come in second. I hope he bumps it up and becomes governor. That would be wonderful, but I don't know how he does that. How do, how do you rebuild from something like this? What an absolute implosion. I was out in, um, I was out in a conference the other day, and, and na nationwide, this is the laughing stock of the party, this race. Yeah, but you know, you look at Republicans in Colorado, and the top of the ticket is a complete mess, and that's true. And if the American Constitution Party is the second place finisher, <laughs> finisher in the governor's race, I haven't studied up on all the statutes and, and talked to all the election lawyers, but I understand that's a very real possibility that that party could be in the number two spot on the ballot for maybe a couple election cycles to come. That may or may not be true. So Don't I, hold I, I me to that. So, so the idea that if whoever comes one and two, the next time that's on the ballot, R's are on, or D's are on top, and then then the American Constitution Party, and then? From what I understand, pretty, I, it depends. Maybe if, if Mays drops below a certain threshold, maybe 10%, and it may be something that it may not just be contingent on one election. So again, I'm not completely sure about the statutes, but I've heard that that's a possibility. But if you look down the ticket, the Republicans, you look at the generic ballot, you look at all the money they're pouring into, the national Republicans are pouring into some of the congressional races. I mean, they still think the Republicans will have maybe some decent headlines come November 3rd if they can win the Senate race and they can maybe take back and some will. congressional seats. And, they and will. certainly if they can win back the State House. If they win back one chamber and the House is very competitive, and if they even win back both, you know, they're not going to beat Hickenlooper. I think they're resigned. They're not going to win back the governor's mansion, but they can beat him by winning back the state house and essentially tying his hands. And I think that's where, if not all the money is going to that, at least that's where a lot of the activity is going that might have otherwise gone towards now, the top of the ticket. Dan Mays believes that the Denver Post is on a one newspaper mission to discredit him. I mean, I've, I've heard him say that you guys are just out to get him. It's one lambasting story after another. Uh, and that you're not giving enough uh, enough coverage to Hickenlooper and, and the others? Or is it just that it's such a target-rich environment, you, you can't help it? Um, we report what we think is news. And if that's uh, things that about uh, what Dan Mace has said um, or things from his background, we're going to report it. Um, <clears throat> I like to think that we have... Um, been fair and that we have certainly scrutinized um, Hickenlooper. Uh, certainly you've read the stories about uh, his donations to some of these uh, far left groups um, that have caused him some embarrassment. And, and to the post um, credit, you guys have really been after him to release the full tax information so we sure. can see where his charitable contributions are. How much is he giving to the Chinook Not Park? that Mays has been uh, the uh, one-upsmanship <laughs> guy on that one, um, but uh, you know uh, we've reported on Hickenlooper's, um, we've scrutinized his business history. Um, we have uh, scrutinized his stances on illegal immigration. Um, so, but I mean, I have to tell you that, um, you know, Dan Mays has continually said and done things throughout the campaign that have been newsworthy. I mean, when a man says that our bike share program is part of an effort to make us a UN community, we're not gonna ignore it.